Hi, my name is Megan, and the video you're about to watch is on the importance of good stream crossing design. In New Hampshire, there are over 17,000 stream crossings, and this video takes a look at some of them. But first, let's take a look at the different types of stream crossings. A stream crossing can be a bridge. Or a pipe culvert. From up here on the street, this stream crossing seems to serve only one purpose, and that's to act as a bridge for passing vehicles. Well, let's take a closer look at its real purpose and function. Aquatic organisms such as fish, frogs, salamanders, turtles, crayfish, and many insects must be able to move freely up and downstream in order to survive. They rely on this up and downstream movement for spawning habitats, eating areas, shelter, dispersal, and colonization. Stream crossings can potentially block access to these areas and prevent gene flow. To ensure the life cycles of these animals are not disrupted, proper design and construction of stream crossings must be attained. Early in the planning process, potential impacts to the aquatic systems need to be assessed, such as potential flooding hazards, environmental impact, aquatic biota, hydraulic capacity, and floodplain geomorphology. Now let's take a look at bridges versus closed bottom structures. Bridges that cover the distance of the stream channel and the floodplain are preferred and typically have the lowest impact on fluvial ecosystems. If a bridge cannot span the channel and the floodplain, it should span one or both banks allowing a dry passage for wildlife. Whenever possible, bridges should be constructed over culverts. But in some situations, like in areas with deep, soft substrate, well-designed culverts are the better choice for a stream crossing than a bridge. Regardless of the type of stream crossing, the width of the stream bed in the proposed structure should be 1.2 times the bank float plus 2 feet. The diameter of a culvert should be no smaller than 6 feet. Any culvert less than 6 feet is too small to access and construct the stream bed. The largest -ish culvert should be is 16 feet in diameter. Any stream that requires a larger culvert should be made into a bridge. Also, the substrate in the stream bed of a culvert should match the substrate of the natural stream. This will reduce the impact to the aquatic life that resides there. There are many problems that can occur when a stream crossing is undersized to the width and depth of the natural stream. One problem that can result is an increase in the velocity of water flow through the crossing which creates a scour pool downstream. A scour pool can lead to perching. Perching is when the stream bed becomes eroded downstream of the crossing and creates a waterfall. This becomes a problem when fish and other organisms can no longer get upstream through the culvert. Undersized crossings also affect the movement of woody debris. Debris such as in-stream wood has been shown to increase in-stream retention of nutrients. Undersized crossings can restrict the flow of organic material. If a crossing becomes clogged with debris, it can lead to severe flooding and erosion hazards. With the presence of debris in the stream or river, smaller amounts of nutrients get transported into larger bodies of water. Too many nutrients added to the aquatic system can cause the system to become eutrophified. The movement of ice downstream also becomes a problem when a stream crossing is undersized. Improperly constructed stream crossings can interfere and block the passageway of ice flow. Ice serves an important role to the fluvial ecosystem as it makes its way downstream. It rubs against and reshapes the stream bed in riparian zone generating new habitat. Without disturbances, such as the movement of ice, certain species would get outcompeted and dominated by others, reducing the diversity of the ecosystem. Let's just briefly take a look at some other poorly designed stream crossings. Now let's look at some properly designed stream crossings.
For more information on stream crossing construction and replacement, see the New Hampshire Stream Crossing Guidelines.